All right. Now that we've gotten an overview of what the set looks like when it's built, let's talk about how to do this for the first time. Uh, there's a couple of back end things that we're going to need to set up as far as our MIDI routing. Uh, for instance, that control channel that allows us to turn the click on and off and loop sections and th things like that. Uh, what it does, it's, it, it's, it's sending MIDI out on a MIDI bus and then it's coming back into ProPresenter. So it creates this loop that the data, the, the MIDI notes actually go out of ProPresenter through a bus and back in. And uh, it uses this, this thing that Max have built in called an IAC driver bus. And really this is just a pathway that allows MIDI data to travel from program to program on the same computer. It's really handy, it's built into Mac, and we're just gonna use it to send data out of ProPresenter and back into ProPresenter. Um, so the way we set this up is we're gonna come up to uh, Spotlight here, a little search function. We're gonna type in MIDI, M-I-D-I, and then uh, we're just looking for audio MIDI setup right here. Uh, and the first window that'll pop up, this is all of our ha audio hardware devices. This is where we can set up like uh, what channel our sound is coming out of and things like that. We're gonna need to come to Window, and go to Show MIDI Studio. That's here, you can hit Command 2 to bring this window up. This shows all the MIDI uh, devices that have been connected to our computer, or that currently are. Uh, and we're looking for this, the IAC driver. I'm just gonna double click that. And we need to go ahead and create a new MIDI port on this driver. So I'm gonna go to the Ports tab. Uh, you'll notice I already have one here. I use this to, um, uh, send MIDI data out of ProPresenter to fade Spotify and do some other things, but uh, we're gonna just, we're gonna hit this plus button to create a new port. Uh, I'm gonna name it. Uh, we'll name it Ableton because that's what we're using it for. And then I'm gonna uh, make sure this box is checked. Devices online. That's what I want. So once I hit apply, I'm done. I've created the pathway for the MIDI to travel down. So I can go ahead and quit audio MIDI setup and fire up Ableton here. So we're starting with a blank slate. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get Ableton speaking to that bus that we just created, that pathway. So I need to come to Ableton's uh, preferences under live preferences, go to the third tab down here where it says link MIDI. And these are all the MIDI ports that are available. And mine's probably going to look a little more like a dumpster fire than yours. I have a lot of MIDI hardware attached to this machine. But uh, <laughs> basically, we're looking for the IAC driver we just created, which is right here. IAC driver Ableton input. And right here, IAC driver Ableton output. And for both the input and the output, we need to make sure track and remote are turned on, right? Track uh, basically says, hey, MIDI notes can be sent down this bus, right? Remote means, hey, this bus can control like the play and stop and loop and basically control the program itself. Um, so we wanna make sure that track and remote are on for the input and the output, um, which they are. Good to go. All right, so now we're ready to create our control channel and start assigning stuff. All right, so I'm gonna create a new MIDI channel. Uh, we have an audio channel up here that's stock, but uh, to do this, I'm just gonna, I can either come to create and hit MIDI track, or I can just hit Command Shift T, and it'll create me a nice little MIDI track. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this audio track that's there. I don't need that. Uh, I'm gonna color this, uh, let's say red. I Red just feels right for a control channel. No other reason than that. Uh, and then I'm gonna rename it, Command R and name it Control. There we go. All right, so now I have this MIDI track that I can assign, I can put notes on the timeline with. Uh, I need to make sure that those notes are going out to the bus that I created. So I'm gonna come to the MIDI output uh, and send it down IAC driver Ableton. Boom. So now any notes that are on this track get sent out to the bus, come back in and control Ableton. So. Now we need to set up some MIDI assignments. And I'm gonna delete what I have here because uh, I have some preset ones just so I can build a few new ones. So when I hit this, uh, this MIDI button, it goes into MIDI assignment mode. And anything that turns purple, I can assign a MIDI note to to control. So essentially, I can have Ableton control, I can, I can have this track control any function in Ableton, whether it's a mute on or off, whether it's, uh, you know, setting markers or playing and stopping, 
setting loop sections. I can have it do anything. It's crazy. Um, so let, let, let's set this up really quickly. So I'm going to create a MIDI region. So I'm just going to double click uh, in the track to create a region in the timeline. And I'm going to assign a note or write a note into that region. Uh, let's just do like a C0. That feels right. So I'm going to double click here to, to insert my C0 note. Um, and now let's say I want to assign this C0 to the stop command, right? Um, so every time... I put a C0 in the control channel, I want it to stop Ableton. So this is really great to put at the end of your set or something like that as an auto stop. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create that C0. I'm gonna select the region. I'm gonna hit MIDI to go to MIDI assignment mode. I'm gonna hit stop to say, okay, I wanna assign this button. And then I'm just gonna play that note I just created. Boom. You can see uh, if we expand this little side tab, now, note C0 is, is bound to the stop command. So every time I put in a C0 in the control channel and it comes across it in the timeline, it's gonna stop when it gets to it. Boom, that's it, pretty easy, right? So now I'll create another region that's like a click on and off, right? So I'll create another region. Let's say we want click on and off to be our G, a G3 right here. And it can really be any note that you want. I'm gonna create the note. I'm going to click that. I'm gonna click MIDI. I'm gonna click uh, do my click on and off button and then just play the note. Boom, and it assigns that G3 to the click on and off. So again, now every time I put a G3 in this control channel, it's gonna turn the click on and off. And every time it goes to this one, it's gonna stop it. So you can see the power in this because I can set up as many MIDI notes as I want to control as many features as I want on this. So last, let's talk about loop sections with the control channel. This is really nice. Um, okay, so say in my set, uh, I have a marker set. So like this is, say this is the beginning of a song at measure 65, right? I'm gonna set a marker at the beginning of the song. I'll name it like, let's see, command R, I can name it like um, song one, right? Or, you know, it, it, we wouldn't loop a song, would we? So I'll name it Loop Section 1, just for kicks and giggles. Uh, loop Section 1. Okay. And I want to make this loop section, like, uh, a few measures, right? I want it to loop, say, all the way to measure 80 here. So I've got my marker at 65, and at, at measure 80, I'm going to create an audio region. And I'm going to give it a note. So whatever note I want to assign to this loop section, let's say it's, uh, we'll go all the way down. We'll say it's a C negative two, right? So I'll create a C negative two in the, in the MIDI region. I will click that uh, MIDI region. I will click MIDI assignment mode, select my marker and play the note. So now every time this, uh, and every time my, playhead goes across that MIDI note, it's going to jump back to the beginning of my loop section to that marker, right? So once I play it and boom, on the downbeat, it switches back to the beginning of the loop. So now I have this really neat loop section. Um, pretty easy stuff. So again, you can assign this to any function in ProPresenter. So if during your project, you need it to do something with the program, you can assign it to a MIDI note. Really, really simple stuff, um, but that's the basics of the control channel. That's where we need to start when we start doing our sets. Um, so I'll end this one here, and next video, we'll talk about how to take this control channel and then start building our set and, uh, and, and make it uh, turn it into a template that we can use. Um, so I'll see you on the next one.